So it looks like all of our items are uh, set to the correct account. I do want to point out that if you have a long inventory list, I mean item list, sorry, and you want to add edit multiple items at one time, you can go to the bottom of the item list, click on the down arrow, and scroll up to add edit multiple items. What this does is it opens up the add edit multiple items screen and it sort of works like an Excel worksheet. You can tab through each one of the columns. You can customize here in the top right hand corner just like we did on the item list. And you can format this so that you're changing uh, one account. And let's just say if we wanted to change an asset account, we could put this to the top of our list and say OK. And we can quickly identify if there are any items coded in correctly, which we've already changed. Um, but you can uh, mass update everything on this list. And one of the awesome things about this feature is if you click on the, a cell, I mean, I'm sorry, right click on the cell and select copy down, it's going to copy the information in this cell all the way down the list. So that is allowing you to edit hundreds of transactions in your item list all at one time. So this is a, a really neat feature um, and a great way to save some time when you're updating several items that may be selected to the wrong account. I'm going to go ahead and close this and go back to our item list. And now it looks like we've got all of our accounts correctly uh, stated on all of our items. So we're going to move on to the next section um, that we, we go to in the inventory cleanup process. And that's reviewing inactive items. So I want to sort the item list so that I can have all inactive items at the bottom. And in order to do that, I click on this X. And I can quickly see that all of my inactive items are here at the bottom. If I come over to my total quantity on hand, I can see that every single one of these items does have a quantity on hand. The reason why we do not want inactive items to have a quantity is because they are not tracked on our inventory valuation summary. The inventory valuation summary tracks active inventory parts and active inventory assembly items. So it will not track inactive items and it will not track non-inventory parts. So I want to go ahead and reactivate these items so they will show up on our inventory valuation summary. In order to do that, I just click on the X and it has now reactivated the item and brought it back at the top of our list. So if we click on these X's, we are bringing the items back. Another way to reactivate is double clicking the item and then taking off the check mark in, the, in this box that says item is inactive. This is one way just to open up individuals to make sure that they are active. And then go ahead and say OK. OK, so we no longer have inactive inventory items. So this part of our cleanup has been done. So before we move on, I'm going to go ahead and see if there are any questions. We do not have any questions um, so far. Awesome. That means we must be doing good. <laughs> OK. So now we're going to go ahead and move off of the item list, and we're going to go back to the balance sheet. I'm going to refresh the balance sheet, and I'm going to refresh the inventory valuation summary. And it looks like our inventory valuation summary has changed, but it's still out of balance from our balance sheet. So I want to go ahead and double click on the total inventory amount. And what this does is we're going to run a no item report. So I'm going to customize this report so that I can see all transactions in the inventory account. So I'm going to go up to customize report. I'm going to take the from date off. 
so that I can see all transactions in this account. And then I'm going to sort this by item detail. And okay. So now my uh, report is showing us all transactions for the inventory items and their balances. So at the very bottom of this report, I'm going to scroll all the way down, I find a section called No Item. That's where this report gets its name, No Item Report. So this section here represents all transactions that are posted to inventory accounts that are not tied to an inventory item. So what we want to do is we want to start reviewing these transactions and making corrections. I'm going to open up this inventory adjustment, and I can see that the account used for this adjustment was the inventory account. We do not recommend posting to inventory accounts when you're doing an inventory adjustment because all this does is move the dollar amount from one account to another account, or possibly just debit and credit the same account. And I'm, I'll go ahead and run a, the transaction journal for this adjustment to show you that inventory adjustment is debiting and crediting the same inventory account. So when you're wanting to adjust the value of an item and you use the inventory account as an offset, you're really not adjusting your total inventory balance. You're, you're just posting an adjustment to the same account. We want to fix this. In order to fix this, we want to select a cost of goods sold account. So we're going to use our drop down and we're going to scroll down and select We'll just post to Invent Materials Cost of Goods Sold. Now, when we save this, we will see that that inventory adjustment has now been removed from this no item report and is no longer part of our variant. So we're going to go to an inventory, I mean, I'm sorry, to the next one, which is a bill. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so this bill was coded to inventory on the expense tab rather than using an item on the item tab. So I want to go ahead and correct this. So I'm going to delete the account and a dollar amount under the expense tab, and I'm going to go over to the items tab and select the item that we received. And I am going to say, have a receipt in front of me for a hundred of these. I'm sorry, I have it for ten of these. And the amount is twelve seventy four. So we now have the item that we received from this vendor. And I'm going to record this in our inventory. So I'm going to say save. And what I want to show you is in the report, we can look at the journal entry. And now we can see that this item right here has recorded the dollar amount in the same account that we had posted on the expense side. So using the item is properly coding to the materials inventory account. Close this and we go back. We will now see that this is no longer in our no item section. Go through just a few more. Removing from the extent, selecting our item. Correcting that this is now in, in our uh, transaction detail underneath the item that we have received. A check is something that most people write, um, and when they're on, you know, when they're in a hurry. And I think if we look at this, um, we can see that this is the same as a bill. 
this is the same setup and accidentally was recorded to the inventory account directly rather than selecting an item. So we're going to go ahead and correct this check as well. And we have received the item rather than receiving to the, the inventory account directly. So I'm going to open up this inventory adjustment. This is a year-end adjustment. And again, this is one that is saying we're adjusting to our inventory account rather than adjusting the value into our cost of goods sold. We're going to go ahead and use our drop-down menu and select the appropriate cost of goods sold account and then save and close it. So it will now remove it from the no item request. And as we go through this cleanup, we will now see that our no item report is actually dwindling down to zero. And we no longer have, I don't think I selected this one all of it. And we no longer have a balance in our no item report. So if there's any questions at this time, please go ahead and let me know because I did a lot of cleanup to a lot of different transaction types. And the no item report is um, a very valuable report in cleaning up your inventory. No questions, Scott? Well, so we did have a couple come in. Um, one specifically was about um, adjusting items on multiple sites. And um, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're focusing on a company that has a single site. So we're not talking about um, multiple site companies. Um, but the question was uh, related to um, if when you activate an item, the um, why we're doing that in the items list. And the reason is because those items were inactivated and they still had a quantity on hand. Um, so Alicia, will you actually show now that in the new QuickBook what um, pop-up we saw this morning when we were taking a look at this um, that you will get if you try to inactivate an item that has a quantity on hand? I sure will. So if we go back to the item list, if you open up an item and we're going to edit this item and we're going to make it inactive by clicking on this box here, you will get this wonderful warning that I know we're going to enjoy <laughs> um, so that people will get a warning and it says, you've got a quantity on hand. Are you sure you don't want to zero this out before you make it inactive? And it, specifically states right here, if you're okay with the inventory valuation summary report being off, click Make Inactive. So remember, that's almost like me telling you right now, you do not want to have inactive items with quantities because it's going to cause an, a variance between the balance sheet and the inventory valuation summary. So if you don't remember this webinar, you will get this warning that will tell you do not so we want to go ahead at this time and say cancel. Now if you choose to make it inactive, I mean exactly like this warning is saying, it's going to um, make your inventory evaluation summary out of balance from your balance sheet. Awesome. And Alicia, can you go through and show the um, how to get to the no item report one more time? I think we've got a couple of questions actually that have come in on that again. Okay. I sure can. So I'm going to go to the balance sheet. I'm going to refresh this, actually. OK, so on the balance sheet, one way of going to that no item report is just double clicking on the balance of the total inventory. So you just double click, and it opens up the transaction by account report. And this is where I went to customize. I removed the from date leaving the to date, because that's what I want the report to generate transactions through, and then modifying the report so that it's totaling by item detail. 
And so we want to select the drop down and then select item detail and say OK. And then at the very bottom of this report, which we've cleaned up all of our um, items, our issues, you, if you do have issues, you will see the no item. But we've already cleaned all of those up. OK, fantastic. Um, does any, so I think that we've answered all the questions that have come in. Um, if anyone has any other questions, um, let us know now. Otherwise, um, someone will be reaching out to you um, sometime within the next week about your attendance at this webinar to see if there is, um, if there are any um, specific issues um, that you guys are dealing with around inventory um, that uh, you would like to help, or you would like to have us help you resolve. Um, again, we didn't go through um, all of the issues that we've come across because we know that inventory is kind of a big beast that we like to tame. <laughs> um, but uh, we did talk about quite a few and some of the definitely more common ones and more straightforward ones. So if you're still having some problems with these reports or if you're using multiple sites and you're having uh, problems with these reports, please do not hesitate to contact your service consultant for um, calling on the main line directly, and um, we can set up some time to go through those with you. Um, so I guess at this point, again, we still don't have any other questions that have come in. So um, Alicia, thank you so much. I think that was a fantastic job. And uh, we'll go ahead and um, end the webinar. And I hope that everyone has a fantastic rest of the week. Thank you so much.